Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Darnell Hunt, director of the Ralph J. Bond Center for African American Studies and co-editor of Black Los Angeles, American Dreams and Racial Realities. I'm pleased to welcome you to the Black Los Angeles Symposium. When we first conceived of today's symposium, we envisioned a far-ranging dialogue about the past, the present, and the future of Black Los Angeles. Toward this end, we have assembled four panels of distinguished scholars and leaders and a dynamic moderator who will pose questions to panelists and chapter authors who sit among you in the audience, as well as field any questions you might have. And so we really want this to be an interactive, engaging discussion of important topics about black life in Los Angeles. Now, before we begin, it's my pleasure to welcome to the podium Vice Chancellor for Graduate Studies and Dean of the Graduate Division, Claudia Mitchell Kernan, who will provide the university welcome. Good afternoon. On behalf of UCLA and the Ralph Bunch Center for African American Studies, it's very much a pleasure to have this opportunity to welcome you to the symposium, celebrating the publication of Black Los Angeles, American Dreams and Racial Realities. Over the course of this afternoon's program, you will hear much about an exciting new body of research which brings to the fore the African American community in Los Angeles and its many contributions over the course of the city's history. I'd like to add just a few words, putting that work in the context of the 40-year-old Center for African American Studies and its mission to create and disseminate knowledge about African Americans. Hard as it is to believe, just 40 years ago, many scholars argued that there was no African American perspective and nothing worth studying from that viewpoint. Many felt that information on African Americans was already adequately covered by the curricula of that time. Dissenting from this viewpoint, the founding students of this center put together a course called The Black Man in a Changing American Context. They were preachers of their time, too. Bringing to UCLA well-known African-American scholars from around the nation. About 500 students, most of them white, attended the survey lecture course. Its success became one spark in a chain of events that led to the Center for African-American Studies, which is now the Bunch Center. Its founders believed that the way to change the academy was to join it, to bring to the lives and cultures of African Americans the rigorous tools of research developed in the various academic disciplines. Activists, too, the young scholars thought that the center and its research should also serve the local African American community. A symbiotic relationship developed between those goals as research served to enlighten and to benefit the African American community. The crucial link between the two was often publications like the book and programs like today's symposium. I want to recall just a little bit of that history. The Journal of Black Studies was started at UCLA, then moved to Temple University with its editor, Malefi Keti Asante, one of the center's first directors. When I was asked to head the center in 1976, I brought to my role a conviction that the term African American needed to embrace people of African descent throughout the world, and especially throughout the Western Hemisphere. During my tenure, a number of important books about African Americans in the Caribbean, South America, and beyond were published. Today, in many ways, the global has become the local, as more than 100 different African descended groups now reside in Los Angeles. A local focus is bound to become more and more prominent in the center's portfolio of activities as the local and the global have now become deeply intertwined. Perhaps the most notable book published during this period was Black Folk Here and There by St. Clair Drake, which for many years was a central text of new college courses in African American studies. A special focus of Drake's work was on the history 
and evolution of racism around the world. It was a pernicious turn that it took in the context of the slave trade to the Americas. At that time, slavery became interwoven with the notion that some people were by nature inferior to others in terms of intellect, culture, and even morally. We continue to live with that legacy. From its beginnings, the center has sponsored research to investigate the legacy of racial subordination and stratification in various contexts. Housing discrimination, home ownership in Los Angeles, television programming, and especially higher education were some of the areas of focus. Uh, higher education has been very prominent in recent years as work done by the Center for African American Studies, the Bunch Center, really became um, a sort of linchpin for reforming admissions, admissions process here in the UC system and UCLA. The center's research has also sought to discover and to celebrate the contributions of African Americans and to explore the various cultures that they have created in Los Angeles, throughout the United States, and the Western Hemisphere. Some of this research has been disseminated through center publications such as the Bunch Research Reports, and I commend them to you. In other cases, like the present work on Black Los Angeles, the research was supported and coordinated by the center, but some of the contributing scholars here are not from UCLA, and the book itself found an external publisher in New York University Press. In the process of its research, the center has also supported several generations of African American scholars, and I see some of them here today. For example, two dozen graduate students worked on the Black Los Angeles project, and three submitted complete chapters to the final volume. Through these students and others, the Bunch Center is creating and disseminating new knowledge, not only within the circle of the present, but well into the future. As you see then, Black Los Angeles, both the book and today's gathering, are part of a distinguished legacy. We're grateful to the scholars who have gathered to play a role in the fulfillment of this aspect of the center's mission, and to those in attendance who seek knowledge about Black Los Angeles, its past and its present, and those images of the future we are able to now envision. We'll feel very confident that you will leave better informed and we hope you will find inspiration in this symposium as well. Thank you very much. Many of you here know that um, Claudia Mitchell-Curran, who has been a uh, fixture here at UCLA for so many years, recently announced that she'll be stepping down uh, from her administrative post as a vice chancellor and dean. So on this occasion, we felt at the Bunch Center that it would be appropriate to recognize Claudia for her long service to UCLA community. So Claudia, could you come back up, please? Oh, I have a plaque here which reads, Dr. Claudia Mitchell Kernan, thank you for your 34 years of service to the Bunch Center, first as its longest serving director, then as the vice chancellor responsible for ethnic studies at UCLA, Bunch Center staff, students, and friends, May 25th, 2010. It's been a labor of love. <laughs> we also have um, some certain uh, certificates of recognition. I'd like to uh, call up to the podium um, two individuals, uh, James Westbrooks, Office of Senator Curran Price, and Steve Miller, Office of Assemblyman Mike Davis. Are you, you here? Good afternoon, everyone. Like I said, my name is James Westbrooks. I serve as district director for state Senator Curran Price. Unfortunately, he can make it here today. Um, they're dealing with a little budget issue going on in a second, so I hope you don't mind. But I did want to present the certificate of recognition on behalf of the California State Senate to the UCLA Ralph J. Bunch Center for African American Studies in honor of your outstanding work and contributions in fostering a better understanding of the rich cultural 
and history of the African American experience. May you continue to provide a creative arena for educational development relevant to the lives and existence of African Americans. Signed, Kern D. Price, Jr., Senator for the 26th Senate District. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, today is a, so, something of a homecoming for me. I'm a graduate of UCLA, so it is an honor and privilege for me to be back home. Um, but we understand the importance of this work. The Assemblyman uh, understands uh, the importance of, of history. Uh, in fact, he is now authoring a bill that would make it a requirement in the state of California for high schools to teach uh, ethnic studies. Uh, we see uh, states such as Arizona <laughs> who have done the opposite. So we understand how important a work like this is and is deserving of recognition. So on behalf of California State Assemblyman Mike Davis, I would like to present uh, this certificate of recognition uh, to the UCLA Ralph J. Bunch Center for African American Studies. Uh, thank you. This really was a collaborative effort. Uh, Anna Christina Ramon and myself, I mean, we were the editors, we tried the whole things together, but from the very beginning, this was a project about trying to bring the academy and the community together. We didn't want to do an ivory tower exercise that uh, was going to be relegated to a bookshelf somewhere in a library. We wanted to do something that we could turn over to leaders in the community, to uh, regular men and women in the community who wanted to make social change. So hopefully what we've produced is a book that has both the rigor that's necessary in the academy, but also the accessibility that our community needs to be able to connect those dots between the past, the present, and the future. Uh, before we move forward, let me just acknowledge some of the sponsors uh, for this uh, eight-year-long project. Ford Foundation, um, Councilman Bernard Parks, William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, J. Paul Getty Trust, and the UCLA Center for community partnerships. One of the things I hope we'll do as we engage in our interactive discussion today um, across the four panels is to keep in mind four questions that have guided this enterprise from the very beginning. The first question that uh, we outline in the introduction to the book is, what is the nature of the black in the space we refer to as Black Los Angeles? Number two, how can the history of a place be employed to make sense of the racial present? Number three, what lessons can be learned that might help make black dreams of a brighter future a reality in the, in the region and beyond? 